Hello and welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week, it chooses the horror movie, and they discuss it. Today we're talking about 2006's Teristas, which was directed by John Stockwell. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Eric. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Good pick, right? <laughs> Gory pick. <laughs> like... Freaked you out. I mean, it's not. I don't really want to be running to Brazil anytime soon. No, no, they. I bet Brazil does not like this movie one bit. Dude, I feel like if you're a Brazilian actor, you'd probably be like, "I'm not fucking doing this." <laughs> I know it's like, a little like uh, over the top. Yeah, like if you go to Brazil and like walk outside, you're gonna get your kidneys stolen from you. That's what yeah. it, like the message is. But at the end of the movie, they do kind of like like, "Oh, there's some good Brazilians out there." <laughs> Like right, they yeah, that, right, yeah. I know they're like, hey, this lady's bringing her oatmeal or something. <laughs> like, but it was a bad. It's like, if I, yeah, it's not good for the British, uh, the British, the, the Brazilian tourism board. I'll put it that way. I mean, if you look at the pros and the cons of like the few people that help them out versus like the vast, like the bus flipping and there being like no police and then like them getting their kidneys cut out. Like, there's a lot of negative stuff. Well, right off the bat, the bus. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like, it's like that's just like. A, like it's just crazy. This movie's nuts. Like all the bad shit that happens is like, yeah, you should you should really slow down. How long has he been a bus driver for? Two weeks. Is yeah. this his first accident? This guy looks like he gets in an accident. Like this is normal. <laughs> yeah, let's I, let's just give a little little overview for people because first of all, I had never even heard of this movie. When you said it, I thought it was new. I thought it was like a new movie. I had no idea it came out in 2006. Yeah. So the the film. It's basically about a group of Americans that want to go to Brazil. It's a brother and a sister and the sister's friends. And they're all like, hey, we're going. The brother's like 34. The sister's like 22. And he's like, I'm looking out for my little sister. They go on this tour throughout Brazil. Bus crashes. They're stuck on a beach. They meet a bunch of Australian and British people. They all get drunk and have a good time. They end up getting robbed, drugged and robbed. And then all hell breaks loose. And they end up getting kidnapped. And their kidneys get harvested. So that's the brief overview of Teristas. Yeah. Do you remember this movie at all? So I remember about this movie, but the reason why it refreshed in my memory is because I looked at like like top 10 horror films of like 2000 and this was on the list. Really? And I got to say it was pre- I mean I don't know if it would be top 10, but it was it was good. I got to say this this con- this movie constantly keeps you on the edge of your seat for the most part. It's very fast paced. It's yeah. not boring. It's yeah. not boring. The yeah. gore is like holds up. Ooh. Holds up, dude. Today even. Oh, I wasn't looking at the screen. Most of the time when they were cutting open her, I, I couldn't even look at the screen. I was yeah. watching the reflection through my window for when it would be over. Bro, the uh, the machete to the hand. Oh, oh. Dude, that was like, yeah. whoa, whoa. Yeah. So this movie to me kind of reminds me of like a cabin fever or a wrong turn, like one of those oh. kind of 2000s movies. Okay. But there's no, like, crazy psycho. Like, there's not, like, mutilated people. It's just, like, actual, like, people. Like, it's kind of messed up. Like, criminals yeah. from Brazil. Like, black market, like, straight up black market, high elite black market people that are in this business to make a lot of money and also save people who have a lot of money that are on waiting lists for organs. Yeah. So, it kind of felt like it was riding the coattail of Hostel and stuff like that, but in South America, you know, like Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good comparison. Um, but the difference I, dude, actually, I've never seen Hostel for the exact reasons I probably wouldn't have seen this movie. I don't like the, this kind of gore. I it's it's not my cup of tea, you know. I've never seen Hostel either. I know about it, but like I yeah. Stop movies like this, this one too freak me out. Yeah, it's it's too real. Like it's 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 too real and it's also like just I don't like gore like this, you know, people getting drugged and then having their kidneys cut out of them while they're alive. Like, I can't stomach this kind of stuff. Yeah, very freaky. But like I was saying, it was in the top 10 horror film list that I found. And I was like, this has to go to the wheel. And I saw Olivia Wilde's in it. Josh Demal's in it. I'm like, it's a decent cast. Yeah, decent cast. So put it on there. And I'm like, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. And like you said, it's like it's it's a hard watch at times. It really is. I don't understand how I've never even heard of this. Like, we were 16, watching horror movies all the time. I mean, like, the Saw movies, uh, Hills Have Eyes came out this year. We, I was watching horror movies. I don't know how I've missed this. I don't know. Maybe it really wasn't put in theaters. I, I don't know. Maybe there was another big movie out at the same time. But yeah. I saw a lot of stuff online. It was also called Paradise Lost. Yeah. I wonder if that has anything to do with, like, a rights issue or something. Don't know. 
Yeah, and dude, the reviews are freaking bad. I disagree with the reviews. I think this is, for what it is, it's a good movie. I think looking back, maybe when it came out, the reviews maybe made sense. But looking back now, you're like, there's a lot worse that's come out here. I mean, I, the acting is good. The acting for for like a horror movie is actually pretty damn good. Yeah. What makes me not be afraid of this movie is because I'm in my 30s now, you know, because I don't I'm, my stupid days are over for the most part. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Well, like if we were. Like, I was constantly watching this movie and be like, oh, my God, I'd never make these mistakes. But, hey, hey, in my 20s, in our 20s, we were dumb. We were clowns, Alec. Well, yeah, I mean, our trip to Hawaii. The booze cruise we did, our organs could have been shipped to Bangladesh, dude, after that. Easily. But seriously, because the way that we woke up after that booze cruise, we woke up on the beach, passed out, like, the hotel staff waking us up. If we weren't in America, like, if we were in some country that didn't speak English, like, who, who knows? Gone. Like, seriously, who no, knows? No shoes, nothing. All yeah. Gone. I mean, we were 22, just blackout drunk on a beach. Like, yeah, bad stuff happens. But um, but Josh Duhamal or whatever and, uh, and Desmond Askew, the, the, the British guy, they were both in their mid 30s when they went on this. So, like, people are stupid still. Like, I don't think it really matters. I mean, I guess like that. That's what kept me from like, oh, my God, I would never make these mistakes. Like, oh, go dive head first into the water like that. And like the guy lit. He's from Brazil. And it looks like I, I do this jump every day. Yeah. And then, like he goes, he's like, fine, I'll go, I'll go. And he goes and does it and just cracks his head open. I'm like, what is going on? Like, yeah, this is a terrible situation in every way. That scene was weird. So there's, <laughs> there's this one guy named Kiko and he's a Brazilian guy and he speaks a little bit of English and he starts kind of flirting with Olivia Wilde. And it turns out that he's actually part of this, this crew, this ar- uh, organ harvesting crew. But then he actually turns on the, the bad guys and he's like, yo, like these guys are actually cool. They're my friends or whatever. So, you know, still fuck him. But well, yeah, well, and he was in the original group of people that robbed them. Yeah. So it's like it's like I don't trust this guy from the like the start. So, yeah. And then he's like, no, let me take you to my uncle. And then you're traveling through the, the middle of the forest. Not there's no roads. It's like <laughs> the middle of nowhere for I think they said 10 hours. 10 yeah? hours. Yeah. I'd be like, you get the hell away from me, Kiko. I am going this way. Literally. No food, no water, no shoes. I would absolutely leave this asshole and just try my best to find someone. Ugh. Which they do and at the end of the movie. Ah, uh, yeah, man. So, but anyways, back, back to that scene with Kiko when he hits his head. So they're like, oh, we're going to go to this house soon or whatever. Like, let's go for a fun swim, though, first. Like, first of all, like, no. No. I'm exhausted. I've been watching walking for 10 hours. Like, yeah. I want to get me to this house. He's like, no, I want to show you the caves. Yeah. And it's like, hey, Kiko, show me how you do the jump. And he's like, okay, fuck, I fucking do it. Like, he's like <laughs> pissed at them. And then he does it and cracks his head open on a rock. <laughs> so I'm like... <laughs> What the hell? Imagine like actually me and you were in that situation and it was just like me and you and Kiko and he just like our tour guide has been walking us through the middle of the forest just like easily like brain damaged pretty much at oh. that point. And like we're, what would we do? We'd be like, oh, let's get him. Let's try to get him out of this water. But dude, we are so screwed. Like, I mean, we don't have that. We don't have our shoes. We don't have a cell phone. We don't have anything. So yeah. So then we, they get him to the house and they, they take a staple gun in his head. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? It's not like a medical staple gun. It's like a package staple yeah. gun. Yeah. That he's going to get s- so infected. Yeah. First of all, it's like dirty. He's got like dirty Amazon water in it. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. And then he's just like, after like the third one, he's like, oh, like, get off of me. And he's fine. Yeah, well, kind of. I mean, he like lays down and then he gets up and saves everyone. Oh, I love that Ugh. though. After they staple his head. They just he goes into bed and they're like, wait, like, should we let him go to sleep? I think he's concussed. And they're like, hey, clean clothes over here. They're like, yeah, he goes fine. And then he just he put the fine. clothes on. But then doesn't he run into like the forest again? Like at one point he like runs away from his uncle. Yeah, once the uncle gets there, he's like, he tries to talk to his uncle. Kiko's like, hey, like, these are my friends. Like, they're actually good guys. And then he's like, you better get out of here, sort of thing. Yeah. So they expect Kiko to run through the woods at night in the rain by himself with a head wound. And a machete. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh that was weird. ridiculous. That yeah. was ridiculous. So anyway, so there's this there's this guy, he's like an evil Brazilian doctor, I guess, and his whole MO is capturing tourists, gringo tourists specifically, and um and harvesting their organs and, and all this stuff for elites from the first world, I guess, that are on waiting lists. He also runs like this organization of poor Brazilian people and pays them shit money to do horrible things. 
which if they did not have this line in the beginning, the ending would be way worse. But they have the line where this doctor guy goes into the house with the Brazilian guy with the long hair and his girlfriend. and They're watching Hogan's Heroes. And he's like, he, he's like, You're, come on, we got a job. And he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Remember when he said that? Yeah, that was a key line for sure. Yeah. And the guy was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he takes out 200, whatever the, the money is there. And he puts it down and, and he's like, all right. So he goes. Yeah, because he knows it's like ethically it's not right. And right. Brazil is a very religious country for the most part, besides like the crime in this movie. So yeah. it's like, I don't know. Like, that's a terrible business to get into. Uh, yeah. So. This evil Brazilian doctor guy, he, uh, you know, he hires a bunch of poor people, makes them capture these these uh, Americans and, and Australians, British, and then and then does this to them. But he said a couple conflicting things when he was cutting open that first woman where he was like, I'm doing this to like give back to Brazil. I'm like, you're, you're not, though. You're making money. Yeah, like you're making money and you're also giving this to assumingly American rich people, not the brazilian people that are like yeah it's the people in australia that are like billionaires and the people in europe that are billionaires that are coming to brazil and getting these organ transplants from from american tourists yeah so he was acting like he was like helping brazil like almost like robin hood for brazilian people but i'm like you weren't helping anybody but yourself and and other rich people do you think that's what like it means like when like Mel Gibson goes to like Europe and it's like I'm going to get quote stem cells and it's like oh are you are you getting some like 15 year old's kidney stem cells you know <laughs> well he did he did go to Mexico with his dad and got stem cells and apparently it's like stem cells we'll call it that I mean if we want to be honest his dad couldn't walk and now he can't yeah no I, I'm joking but yeah, like yeah I don't that's think a... cutting off legs or anything <laughs> but. He, I mean, the stem cell thing is real because it's illegal here, but it is legal in other countries. So, I mean, I don't know. Kind of the same situation in some way. That's what I'm saying. Like, you travel to a, a country where it's not legal, but where you can get it. I mean, even. I think stem cells is a little different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm joking. I'm, yeah. I'm giving a terrible example. It's real. It's real, though. Yeah. One thing I wanted to bring up, too. Uh, I have a couple fears in my life. Like, I've bungee jumped. I've ziplined. I've jumped out of a plane and skydived. I've, you know, we've jumped off rocks before into the water. I will never, ever, period, ever go cave diving. Like, where you're underwater and have to find a hole to... Oh, yeah. You will never, ever see me do that. Ever. That scene I actually didn't like very much. So that was kind of like the ending of the movie. It's it's a good like 15 minutes of them in a cave underwater looking for pockets of air as a guy's chasing them. So that was a little bit long and it's very stressful. I mean, if anybody's played any video game where you it's an underwater level and like especially Sonic where it's like din, 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 and then you're like, you, that's what it felt like to me. I don't know. Yeah, when you're I didn't even know you could start sucking air bubbles like that like coins ah, and sonic i don't think that's I was like, does that work that doesn't work that doesn't work like bloop, yeah bloop. so what? for anybody that hasn't seen it there's there's parts of the movie most of the time they find little like actual places their whole head can fit and they can get air but there's other times where there's like air bubbles on the rocks and they're just sucking the air in i'm like give me a break come on Come on. I, uh, I gotta U- youtube that but uh don't go down a youtube rabbit hole and watch like failed cave diving gone wrong i did that like 10 years ago and it messed me up i will never go cave diving there's a there's a reason why cave tunnels exist and that's for us humans to leave them the hell alone leave them alone i mean nothing really good ever happens i mean like the descent movie you know anything with a dark cave like like those kids the soccer kids in thailand you know where they had you know when the kids got stuck in a cave yeah you wouldn't no no i know chilean miners remember that no, I've been in a I've been in a cave, but not like an underwater like one that could get flooded. No, 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 me neither. I went to one in Australia. It was crazy. It was so yeah. big and so deep, but uh, yeah, there was no water. Yeah, but yeah, man. I mean, yeah, they're doing stupid stuff. I would never do anything remotely risky. I wouldn't even feel comfortable walking around with those shoes on. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you know what they did with those kids in in Thailand too to get them out? No. They like drugged them up. They gave them sedatives. They put scuba gear on them and like dragged them out. And it took them two hours. It's like, okay, kids, close your eyes. Bloop, bloop. And then they like tied a rope on them and like slowly dragged them out and took two hours. <laughs> so scary to do that. And those people that rescued these kids are freaking heroes, dude. Dude, yeah, it's scary. I mean, Earth is scary. Just stay, mm-hmm. stay in your, your lane. You know, you don't need to go <laughs> cave diving. You don't have to do crazy stuff. Today's episode of Wheel of Horror is brought to you by Bard's Clothing. Remember that one time you bought a Cool Cat shirt, and now you get bombarded with calls and ads for Cool Cat shirts? At Bard's Clothing, the focus is on you and your story. 
a custom clothing company producing casual knits, button-down shirts, suits, and much more. All of Bard's clothing garments are created right here in America, so you don't have to worry about slave labor or killing the environment. Buying with intention to tell your story has never been easier. Go to bardsclothing.com to book an appointment, and be sure to follow them at Bard's Clothing on Instagram. I'll, I'll say this. I, I, I had a prediction during this, too. I thought, you know, in one of the early people, either that one of the British crew or that Prue, Prue woman, mm-hmm. like that they just felt, oh, I'm back, backpacking alone. Or even the bus driver was in on it, the whole thing. Mm. You know, like maybe the bus driver like flips on purpose and then it's like, oh, no. let's walk over here. And no way. And it's like, oh, and then that's how they get the people. Like if, if they didn't show up there, you know, I think it was. It was just it was the chance that they they showed up at that beach. I think that's I don't think the bus had anything to do with it. And someone who knows that guy is like, hey, I found some more tourists for you. Yeah, dude. It's all I think they're all just kind of like looking out for things, you know, because the bus driver, that was a complete accident. That guy's an idiot because they have no idea that they were all going to be able to get out. That's horrible. There's no way everybody would have been able to get out either. That bus was teetering on the cliff and everybody's like, come on, guys, get out, get out. It's just like, (laughs) I don't know. Uh, Josh Dumel, though, I got to say, he he impressed me in this movie. He really, you know, because he looks like the kind of guy that's like, come on, we're here to have fun, like whatever. But he played kind of against type. He was really like, no, and, well, yeah. just like clammed up, like didn't want to have fun, was very concerned about everything that was happening, you know, and uh, <laughs> then he finally let lo- lets loose and then all hell breaks loose. But yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot, man. It was. Yeah, I thought it was a good performance by everyone, like even especially those cave scenes. That's like tough to film and do. Oh, OK. That's what I was going to mention. Back to the cave scene. What the hell was the plan if that one guy caught one of them? Was he, Is it just to kill them? Drown him. Yeah, he was going to drown him. But Dump why? Him. Like, let him go. Like, you can could... get their organs, though. Can you, though? I mean, got to be, we got to be real quick. Because you're killing. You got to get the ice ready. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Because I, I was like, all right, so he's going to drown one, drag her body all the way back through the water. Like, I don't know. I think they ultimately had to kill them or they're like, they're whole system would get called out so they didn't want anyone escaping and maybe telling the authorities it doesn't seem like there are authorities i mean every i mean that that dude i mean this movie like we said makes brazil look horrible yeah yeah, yeah. also like the fact there's also a scene where the dude's like eating lunch in daylight and just kills a dude in like the middle of like the town yeah let's talk about that scene so evil brazilian doctor his crew, the, these guys that don't want to really be doing this, they capture two of the Swedish people. So that's the thing. Were they just going to let everybody go if they got the Swedish people? That's what it seemed like. You know, it seemed like they just they captured the two Swedes because they were completely blacked out and messed up in the drugs. And then they just robbed the Americans, the British and the Australian and let them go. But then they went into the town and threw the rock at that kid. And then this whole thing started happening. So if they had just been like, all right, hey, let's just wait for this bus. Let's just wait for this bus. Then they probably would have got away. Yeah, but they had to keep going. And they also didn't have any shoes. Like, I have terrible bitch feet. Like, my feet are very soft. So I would never be able to to walk around in Brazil, which I can't even imagine what's on the ground. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're wearing shoes all the time. But, but yeah, I mean, if I were those guys, I would just be like, we, we got to just wait for the next bus. I don't know. Like, going into a town. Yeah, 100% would wait for the bus. But they said it would take days. But that's probably them tricking them. It's like, do we really trust this person to know when the bus route is? Because he goes, today, and he's like, no, I mean two days. Yeah, I know, yeah. Because he corrected himself. He's like, do you mean today or two two days? He's like, oh, two, two days, because uh, you'll probably wait if it's today. Right. I, I actually like that. I thought that was a pretty clever way to kind of, you know. Fix, know. fix that error, because they were like, oh, let's just wait for it. And he's right. like, oh, no, I mean uh, two days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't think of that. They do kind of, it is a pretty, like, tight script. Like, they do show, like, well, these guys don't really have a lot of options. It's very fast-paced. It's well-written, too. Like, I like the scene, too, where they wake up, and it's Olivia Wilde. Like, oh, my God, they took Nana's ring or something. And, like, Josh Mo's like, don't even freaking think about that right now. We're going to die. Like, we need to focus on getting out of here. Like, I love that line. That's a great line, too. He's like, there's a lot more important things right now than Nana's ring. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, because you said that you like the pacing. Almost nothing happened for the first 30 minutes. I mean, the, the sexiness happened and like yeah. the, the eye candy and all that. And like, that's I mean, this, this movie made me feel fat, dude. Like, <laughs> I was watching it. And I'm like, man, everyone is very, very good looking in like ridiculous shape. I know that it was making me think I was like, 
are there just people that are so good looking that like no matter what they do in life, like they they're just going to end up modeling or being in movies no matter what? Like, yes, it's just like, yes, you, you can't be an accountant. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out of here, man. Like the piano man of looking good. You got to share your face with the world because <laughs> like, like i like there's there's actors that are really bad but they're so unbelievably good looking men and women and it's like you couldn't just work in it like you couldn't like look at you look at you yeah i mean i'm in decent shape i'm not i'm not fat but like i'm not my best form right now you know uh due to covid uh <laughs> but you know watching these like little birds bouncing around and josh Demol like strut around brazil and like this like half malnourished body i'm like oh i feel like captain crispy crunch like ugh. i mean it, it is disgusting. it is bad that josh Demol is like two years older than us and he looks like phenomenal yeah yeah so i'm like <laughs> well you know what it's good to know that like it's still possible at this age <laughs> yeah but yeah. but all the women like wow like supermodel looks i mean everybody yeah i think most of them are in their early 20s i think olivia wilde was like 23 or 24 so olivia wilde and Bo garrett and and the liam the uh the long-haired uh british guy those guys were all in their early 20s everybody else was in their early 30s wow yeah so um josh numel prue the australian and then finn the uh the british guy who, who gets tied up or whatever all three of them are like 34 okay I was like, wow. So they, I liked that. I like how there was like an age gap. And you could tell. You could tell kind of like Bo Garrett and Liam were a little bit more like carefree and fun. And Olivia Wilde was still pretty, you know, she was she was there to have a good time. But I think she knew shit was going bad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Prue, though. I liked Prue. I liked her. I want to know more about her. I thought she was going to be in it. I thought she was going to be in on it. Like the, tri- the tricky, like fake tourist. Like oh. the American that joined them. That's what I thought. I didn't trust her. Hmm. Yeah. I mean... She yeah, I mean, that that was the thing though. She spoke fluent Portuguese, so you'd think that she'd be like, "Kiko, let's let's really talk. Like, let's really talk. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, what the hell are we doing? Not like broken English, so I don't really understand. Like, you both are speaking the same language. Have a real conversation, yeah. Um, because dude, ten hours in the in the jungle with no food and water, like that's just it's it's insane. Like that's insane. There's no way yeah. you do that. And then especially yeah. right when you get there, and he's like, no, 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 we shouldn't go to this house. We shouldn't go to this house. And they're all like, well, we're so far. It's like he's warning you now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But if he didn't smash his head though, dude, that was the thing I liked. Him smashing his head forced them to go to the house, which I was like, that's good. They they just knew exactly it was like it's up the hill or whatever he said. He said, it's right up the hill, but like, first, let's go. I'm sure they wanted to jump in the water and like wash off because they were probably covered with like sweat and mosquito bites and shit. Yeah. But I think Kiko, if he didn't hit his head, I think he probably would have been like, no, 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 we're not going. We're not going. The bad man, bad man. Like, he eventually. He was starting to do that. He was. But then when he hit his head, I'm like, that was very smart of the writers to be like, we're, we have to create some sort of thing that forces them to go there. You know, yeah. I, I did like that. But I don't understand. They get to this house, which is a creepy ass house with just security. Like... Yeah. Drugs and passports and just it just it's a crazy place. Why the hell were those guys not there already? I mean, clearly with all that technology, there would be a phone there. Yeah. Clearly. So you would need to call someone immediately. Dude, they have a helicopter. So they're what? Just sitting in that town, like hanging out, drinking coffee, stabbing people in the eyes with like skewers or whatever. Dude, get up. And they're like, he goes bringing him to the place right now. It's like, yeah, we got 10 hours. It's like, all right, what do you guys want to do? It's like, like, what are they doing? Partying? Like, what the hell are they doing for 10 hours? Get on the helicopter and go and be there when they get there. Yeah. Because there's so much that could have gone wrong in between them. They could have, like, fig- I mean, dude, that place is creepy as hell. They should have figured out how weird it was just from sitting there for a few hours. You know, they had time to eat. They had time to take showers. They had time to smoke cigarettes and house, like, crazy stuff. Yeah, F that. Get I'd, out I'd, of there. I'd, I'd get out of that situation as quick as possible. Right, because they're all saying, like, what kind of house doesn't have a road? Yeah, a bad house. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> a house that you don't want to go to. So, I, right when I would have got to that house, you're right. There's definitely a phone there. Come on. Come on. Yep. But yeah, then Kiko, then they're all sitting at the house sleeping or whatever, which I, I could never sleep knowing everything that's going on. Mm. Helicopter comes and immediately it all goes to hell right there for the rest of mm. the movie. And then there's this one woman that's with all these bad guys and the bad doctor. And she speaks fluent English and doesn't really have an accent even. And she's just like, Oh, I've been to New York once. Like just trying to like warn them too. She tells them to run straight up. What would you do? Uh, 
right there. That woman says to you, hey, you need to run. They're going to do some messed up stuff. Do you need to run right now? In that situation, I would I would kind of have to stay with my sister. Like more. I mean, if Josh, he t- she tells Josh Jamal, right? And uh, I think it was like, it was like her and there's somebody else there. I think it wasn't his sister though, so he, yeah. he probably got kind of like, I got, "My sister's not here, I can't run." Right? So I think yeah. that was the that was the case. <sighs> but yeah, you you would you would really start thinking your exit strategy if someone told you to do that. Uh yeah. Like, what are they gonna what are they gonna do to me? Like, I wouldn't think take my organs, but damn, like that was real quick. Um, I think that's kind of where my brain. Went uh, yeah, on. I think I think that's where. Yeah, that's probably in that situation where my brain. Went I'm like, it. what else? What else are they gonna do to me? Like, of course they're <laughs> gonna take my organs. That's all I got. Yes. Did you know there's a sequel? To this is there because i looked it there up is. I, I couldn't find it maybe it wasn't made i think it was i think it was actually made in 2012 um but it's kind of the same thing but they add a layer to it and instead of like you know drunk party kids they're actually smart researchers that like found this insect that can like cure diseases and they're celebrating they found the cure and then all hell breaks loose I don't think it's related to this man i can't like if you go on the wikipedia page there's nothing about a sequel like it might be a different country. I don't know, but it, I think it's called Teristas Two. I know. I saw that too. Did I just make this up? Well, I typed it in and it popped up too. But then when I clicked it, it just went to Teristas One again. So I was like, okay, huh. I, I, it was weird because I'm looking at the Wikipedia too, and I, I tried to read up about this because I was like, you know, there's not that much about it. But yeah, oh. Terista, Teristas Part Two or Teristas Two Jungle Fever is a 2010 <sighs> Jungle Fever American torture. Yeah, to the C- yeah to Teresa's. Let's see. I believe it because I did see it yesterday too. Unless this is all fan fiction. Oh, this is t- when, when did this come out? This came out. Oh yeah, no, there's 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 acting in it. There's acting in it. There are actors in it. Oh, uh, Christ- Christina Milian Milian is in it. Uh, is this true? What the hell am I reading? I know, dude. Because you'd think it would be on the Wikipedia <laughs> page. It'd be like the sequel what? came out. You know, straight to DVD. I'm looking right now, dude. I didn't read this last night. There were protests in Brazil when this movie came out. Yeah, I believe that. Okay, so ready? The film was boycotted by citizens of Brazil of perceived negative imagery that was portrayed about the country. The actor Josh Dumel apologized to the Brazilian government and to the Brazilian people during his appearance on Jay Leno's Tonight Show. He said that it was not the intention of the film to stop tourists from visiting Brazil. Actress Bo Garrett also commented on the commentary saying the film isn't about scaring people away from traveling or seeing places like Brazil. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that failed. Yeah. Man. Uh, Brazil is an incredible country and highly embraced us. And I never felt like an alien at all. Well, then why'd you make a movie that doesn't wow. make you want to go there? <laughs> yeah, I should ask Kevin. My, my, my roommate from college is, is Brazilian, like like 100 percent Brazilian. And th- I'll t- put it this way. The dude used to watch soccer matches at 4 a.m. in our dorm. <laughs> Kevin, if you're listening, I'm never going to South America in general. But uh, oh <laughs> no, I mean, he. I'm curious if he was to watch this, he'd be like, "Dude, yeah, dude, yeah." Like, I could just hear him right now. Like, come on, man. I know, I know. Come on, man. He'd be like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, but it, it, the movie ends with that Brazilian family being like so hospitable. It's not enough. That's not and enough. like that's Kevin though. Kevin, yeah, would make, make me oatmeal. And if stuff. you're if you're a smart normal person, you know, ninety nine percent of Brazilian <laughs> uh, people are nice normal people. But this movie, if you're an American who's never gone anywhere really, and you see this, this isn't gonna make you want to go. You know, no, like, no. so I can understand. I can really understand why people that watch this movie in Brazil are probably just like, this is bullshit. Like you guys, come on. It's weird, though, too, because like you watch movies in America and there's so many violent movies that take place in America. But I'm like, I'll go to Chicago. I don't care. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's Detroit. fine. Yeah. yeah. Like that's yeah. I don't I'm not. Yeah, worried. I lived in Bridgeport for th- two years. Like, yeah. I'm OK. I made it out. I lived in bed Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there's a billy joel song walking through bed at night i used to do that every goddamn day <laughs> but uh-huh. it's yeah so i don't know i think it's just kind of, you know obviously there's a language barrier that's a huge thing there's a huge cultural difference mm. clearly there's just like not a lot of power and running water and police and things that we're very accustomed to this movie did not make it seem like those are readily accessible anywhere but this is not what i think about brazil obviously no <laughs> you know no. But that Machu means, Picchu. I don't think that's there, but <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you said that last night. I think you texted that. Like, sorry, Machu. You're like, sorry, Machu Picchu. I'm not going to see you after watching this movie. Yeah, it's been Peru. Machu Picchu is in Peru. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right, though. You're right. Though. I did say that. I was like, well, I guess I'm never going to Machu Picchu. <laughs> it looks beautiful, but yeah, I don't know. But anyways, this movie, 
the budget was 10 million and it made 14 million. So it made it a little bit back. It didn't do very well, but I'm kind of surprised they didn't make a straight to DVD sequel. Hmm. If it made 4 million, I mean, eh. I don't know. It could be tough. Yeah. You know, and maybe the backlash really did make them be like, we shouldn't keep doing this. Yeah. You know, I, I would say there was some backlash for this one. It's a little aggressive on how bad it makes Brazil look, but um, right. Real quick before we wrap up, I have um a sequel idea. Good, let's hear it. Not not the one that may or may not exist. Um, <laughs> it's more of a merger. So let me set the scene real quick. Yeah. Same shit happens. It's in Brazil. Bunch of young hotties are traveling, partying, getting drugged. You know, they get end up in the organ harvester, and then one of the boys he's trying to pull it together, and he convinces the harvester about his uncle and he's like my uncle's extremely wealthy he will transfer 